Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship. My name is David Lee, and I am the lead pastor here at Central United Methodist Church. Thank you. Thank you for being with us here today, here in our sanctuary, um, as well as joining us online. Know that your presence here is a blessing to us, and we pray that this time of worship can be a blessing to you as well. We are celebrating um, a very special worship service today called All Saints Sunday. We are remembering the saints. Now that word sounds a little funny to us, right? Uh, but we are remembering our saints. Uh, that, 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 is, that, it, that word is kind of an ancient word, but when we use that word saints, in one sense, we're simply referring to the faithful, those who have lived their life here and have moved on. But mind you, saints does not mean perfect, right? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but they do go before us, and they did live their lives here very real lives of flesh and blood where they, where they merge, where they try to integrate their faith, their life with the world that they lived in. And as such, all believers in that sense are called to strive and to exemplify that love of Christ in their lives. And, and so we see these saints before us as an example to all of us who come after them. And on this day, as the body of Christ, the church, uh, we want to recognize and honor those saints who also continue to live among us, who continue to run their race. And so this past, and so just earlier, we recognize those saints who have moved on um, and our loved ones who may be gone but are not forgotten. Nor are they done with us, apparently. For we are reminded in God's word in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The saints, our saints, who have gone before us have formed a great cloud of witnesses. They may have passed on, but their life does not end. Rather, we're told that they have gathered they have gathered and are cheering us on in order that we who remain can also run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. This mortal life is the arena in which we are called to live out our life in faith, to strive to be as God, like God as much as we can as we continue to follow in the footsteps of our Lord. And so, as Scripture reminds us, let us not grow weary or lose heart. What a comfort and an encouragement for us to know that we remain in their thoughts and in their hearts as they look to spur us on. So, on All Saints Sunday, as we have recognized those saints who have moved on, let us also take time now to recognize the communion of saints, by which we mean the body of Christ, the church. 
both the church universal across denominations the world over, as well as the local congregation. The church, the body of Christ, is the communion of saints. The saints on earth. As believers, we belong to this communion of saints. This word communion in the Greek is the word koinonia. Koinonia. It's an embrace of community and fellowship. An embrace of community and fellowship. The Apostle Paul describes it as a community that is bound together in faith and common experience and common life that we have together. So it's all about the believers coming together in hope and love and unity and the worship of our God. That's the kind of community and fellowship the church ought to have with one another. This is the kind of community, koinonia, that we as communion, as the communion of saints, are to strive for. We saw... We, we saw the first occurrence of this koinonia in Acts chapter 2. I don't have the scripture for us today, but I want you to listen as I read these words to you. Speaking about the fellowship of believers from Acts chapter 2. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. That's what koinonia looks like. That's what church is to look like. The communion of saints. The Apostle Paul adds on to this notion of koinonia with these words. By being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. This kind of koinonia is based on and made possible only by our koinonia with Jesus Christ our Lord. Being united with Christ, we're able to be like him in spirit, mind, and heart. And love is that defining ethic in that relationship. And it is this koinonia that we have with Christ which forms the basis of our hope and our salvation. That is the promise that we hold on to this day as we remember our saints. Oh, how good and sure is this hope. But more than that, I want, to, I want us to add on to this. Hear now from John in his first letter to John in chapter 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. That is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, we are children of God now, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. You see, more than that, you are a child of God. Now, beloved and blessed and cherished by our Father in heaven. And God wills to do great things in and through you. That is the truth of God's word for us. Never forget that. I want you to hold on to that for dear life. This pandemic that we have been living through for the past year and as for the past year and a half 
uh, has taken away the usual ways that we tend to the loss of loved ones in our lives. It has made grieving especially hard. And so in this service of all saints, let us come together acknowledging that, that grief and our human loss and let us seek together as God's people, God's grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. If you have lost a loved one in the past year, let us seek to name them now, out loud or in silence. We've named those in our church family, but those in our lives, in our, in our extended families, in our extended church families. Let us take this moment now to remember and to name those that we have lost in this past year. I want to give you a time later in the service to acknowledge those losses and to honor that loss. These, these past 18 months have been rough. So rough that I, I feel like we haven't caught up yet to all that has happened over this past year and a half. We're still living in it, and we haven't caught up to it. So I want to take some time, not just for those saints that have moved on, but for the communion of saints that continue to live on here, to take a moment to lift up for ourselves, to pray, and to ask for God's blessings, to, to seek encouragement and support that we may seek to serve and to love one another, the saints that are present here with us in this communion of saints. So let us also take time this morning to remember those in our midst, those who continue to live among us but may be hurting and struggling in one way or another. Let us remember those on our prayer list. Talmadge Strickland, Jimmy Toole, Travis and Stacy Hoyle, Sarita Verma, William Pierce, Bill and Loretta Harris, Wayne Black, Larry Brown, Laura Lombardi, Lillian Rogers, Marilyn Herndon, Ann Stevens Sichi, Larry Thomas, Claudia Rose, Frankie Patterson, Bill Jack, Jesse Sumrell, Dawn Russell. Gina Blanton, Dale Almond, Emily Ousley, Rita Hamrick, Pat Ellison, Bill Ledford, Brian Goff, Tammy Mooney, Judy Beachley, Alan and Scarlett Funderburk. And we lift up all those who remain in our hearts this day. 
In just a moment, we will be celebrating Holy Communion together. And you'll be asked to come forward to receive your elements here in the baskets up in the altar. When you do come, I want you to, I want to give you an opportunity to lift up those that we have lost in the past year by lighting a candle in their honor. So please take that time when you're called up to receive your elements and go back to your seats that if there's somebody that you want to remember that you have lost, please use that time to light a candle for them. The communion of saints, the saints in communion uh, become more visceral, uh, palpable when we take part in this sacrament of holy communion. We, this, is, this is something that our church does every month. Um, but I'm not sure we always get this part of it, which is um, that whether it's ancient or modern liturgies for Holy Communion, it always includes these words in it. It's always there, but I don't know if we always pick up on this. And the words are, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. All the company of heaven. That's that great cloud of witnesses that we just heard about. Those that are up there cheering us on. I say these words with your people on earth and all the company of heaven every time we celebrate Holy Communion, which means that we get to join our voices to sing God's praise with all the saints, living and the dead. So when we gather in worship, we praise God with believers across the pew, across the street, and even those we cannot see around the world. And when we celebrate Holy Communion, we feast with the past, present, and future believers of Christ. We participate and experience the communion of saints, living and dead. This faith community stretches beyond space and time. We commune with believers around the world, believers who came before us, and believers who will come after us. Belton Joyner, a retired United Methodist pastor from the eastern part of our state, tells of a friendship that he and his wife had with another pastor and his wife, uh, that for decades, uh, these two couples had been very close friends, doing the things that friends do, taking trips together, spending time in each other's homes, sitting around the table, sharing a meal for decades. Susan, the wife and the other couple, had died a few years back, but they had not been able to get together. And this was the first time since her death that both the pastors were going to be together, and they found themselves at a worship service that was going to include Holy Communion. <clears throat> Belton leaned over to his now widowed friend and said, I sure am looking forward to having dinner again with Susan. And with that, they went together to the Lord's table to participate in Holy Communion. Let us prepare our hearts now. Let us prepare our minds to partake in Holy Communion as the communion of saints who are joining our voices to those in heaven to praise God and to worship him today.